Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Um, please let me introduce you, Mr. James Alexander. He'll talk to us about wiki guides and new, new users. Apologize if you can't see anything as I'm putting graphs on or something for the light. Let me know. We can adjust it. Um, and my screen's going to keep going like that. Um, as he said, I'm James Alexander. I'm a fellow with the Wikimedia Foundation. I joined with them last year as part of the fundraiser and uh, sort of kept going as part of the fellow to look at research and how we can help with new users. Uh, more recently, I've been swallowed up by the fundraiser, so I'm not doing this research as much as I'd, as I'd like to. Um, and let's see. There we go. Um, my main project was WikiGuy. Ooh. Can we turn down the mic down a little bit? It's feeding back. Um, as long as people can hear me. Uh, my main project was the WikiGuides experiment, which main goals was to try to find experienced users, um, the ones who self-identified that they really wanted to help new users. We didn't actually do a giant push to get these people. We wanted to do a little bit of a sample. We wanted to see how it was going to work. Um, and we wanted to get them, and we wanted to test how, hard, how effective it was to actively reach out to new users. And we wanted to reach out th to them at sort of critical points just as they're starting. So when they've made, right after they've made their first edit, when they've had, a delete, had an article deleted, when they've been attacked, or when they've gotten a big warning, especially if it was sort of unwarranted, um, when they've only sort of gotten yelled at, having someone come, at, come after, at them and say, you've done a good job, or give them some advice, and to actively go out and do this, rather than waiting for them to come get us, or waiting for you to sort of randomly stumble across them. Um, to do that, we wanted to try to have randomly assigned new users for these guides. So, and we also wanted to try to use email as well as the user talk pages, because we, we wanted to try to make it as personal as possible and per, as personalized as possible. And with new users, talk pages are, again, a very new thing. Um, and we, at the time when we started it, now we actually have the automated email um, reminders if you get a talk page message. That wasn't the case when we started this in, uh, in March. Um, so we wanted to have another, have us reach out in a way that they already understood, that they were online, they, they, if they had an email attached to their account, they probably knew how to use email and they'd be checking it more often. Um, so for the wiki guides in general, we sort of started it off by, um, tr by re spending a month and just reaching out. We left messages up on a uh, um, on wiki projects that we related, sort of like the welcoming wiki projects, new users, um, new page patrol, places where we knew people were working directly with the new users and would be interested in helping out. Um, we also sort of actively reached out in the EN help channel on IRC where a lot of people help out um, and OTRS some. Um, and then just had people come and, and self-identify that they were interested. Near the end, uh, sort of a, right near the end of that first month, we also put up a watch list notice that got a lot of people um, who were interested and just asked if people wanted to help. Um, as part of that, when they came in, we wanted to try to get them involved, ask them how they wanted to help run the experiment, what their ideas were. Um, they started working on templates together on how to e email out to people, sort of the specific use cases that they would come across frequently, such as an article that was deleted or an edit that was reverted. Um, and to have them, ha have them share their own new user experiences. Um, one of the biggest things we found when they came, and they were all sort of interested in sharing their, their experience, um, and the vast, vast majority of them didn't have help at the beginning. Um, they sort of all, they, they, they came, a lot, many of them, of the people who were there, sort of about 50-50, um, did, did just fine. They spent sort of a month or two with almost no interaction. Um, or they actually came and had some very bad interaction, um, but ended up staying. Um, we also found what was interesting was that of the editors who came, we, sort of, we had a good subsection of very experienced editors who were very interested in this, in this, but then there was actually an awful lot of relatively inexperienced users who were around for only two or three months, but were really, 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 really liked it. They'd had their own bad experiences, and they wanted to find a way to make it better for the new users. Um, which was actually sort of a surprise. There was a lot of those people that when I was sort of 
more disconnected from the wiki community during the fundraiser I'd never seen before um, because they were just brand new. They'd come on, onto the scene, but were really, really enthusiastic about that and had already started getting involved in welcoming and trying to help people. Um, we had a lot of early successes. So I guess before I get to this slide, our first idea was that we wanted to take the, a random set of new users and randomize them, get a control group, get a, uh, get, get a working group, and then assign batches to each of the editors or to the wiki guides. And then say, here, here's, the, here's the group, reach out to them, and, that, and then as they respond, then you'll be able to work with them. Um, and so we, we peaked out with about 60 guides. That was sort of about halfway through that second month when, once we started reaching out. Um, and in the end, we um, had reached out to about 2,000 new users. Um, we, did, we did see some, some changes that were, that were encouraging um, and were a little bit different than we were kind of expecting. Um, the biggest difference was actually where they were editing. Um, so we had a slight increase, um, which is very slight. It's about three was the average in main space edits. Um, but we actually had a much bigger de decrease in user and user talk page edits. Um, the editors that we had reached out to and offered help through email and through talk pages, they actually ended up not, de not doing as much of the sort of social stuff and more of the editing stuff instead, um, which, was, which was actually kind of interesting. Um, we also had a lot of difficulties. Um, we knew from the very beginning, like when we were talking about it, that the response rate was going to be tough. There is a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of uh, decisions that we knew people left. We, didn't, we knew they didn't stay for, many, for, for long. And so if you send out 50 emails, you're probably only going to get zero, one, two, three back. Um, and to get the larger groups of randomized users, we needed multiple days of new users, which ended up actually being more of a, a bigger problem. Mostly because to get, when, we, bleh, when we needed to take a couple days worth of new users, they were gone. Um, so this is the, for our first two groups, which was sort of about three weeks each. Um, you can see how many of them were editing in each group. Each line is sort of, the red and blue are the, um, edit, the guided group and the um, controls. But you'll see they start off and we have a huge number of them editing. But then two or three days later, they're gone. Um, and the biggest problem here is that if you actually look at it, the cohort one, we actually were able to assign users essentially at the bottom of that big spike. So by the time, by the time we got a list out, almost none of them were editing already. Um, for the second group, we tried to do it faster, and we sort of got it out when there was a, that last third day. Um, but it's still the next day, almost none of them were editing. And so we had this big issue where we just weren't getting enough people to reach out to. Uh, uh, let's see. Sorry. And the biggest problem I think we found was it was just very, very tough on the guides. It was incredibly, incredibly tough to make it sustainable. So we had this issue where we had like, the only way we could, we tried our first group only giving each guide sort of 10, 15 um, new users. The problem was that a huge amount of the guides didn't get any response. It was too small. Too many of them left when they sent out the emails and frequently it would take people two, a day or two to get all the emails out, um, even for such a small group. Um, and so, that once they sent them all out, they'd just sort of be waiting, they'd be waiting, maybe they'd get one or two back. Frequently they were from a company or something, and so people were worried about point of view issues. Um, and so they ne very, we only had rare actual sort of success stories. And we're not complete, we don't actually think that was because, or at least I don't think it's because there isn't a lot of those. We have thousands of users. The problem is that when we wanted to try to get this, every little step we took, like we wanted to make sure we had e users with emails, and so that's only about two-thirds of the new users. We wanted to be able to split them up into a control group, um, and so we needed a couple days, and by the time we got them out, most of them were gone. Um, and then once you filtered that in with the small response rate, um, it was incredibly disheartening. A lot of the, a lot of the um, editors came in. They were really, really excited. They, got, they were really excited through the month as we're preparing for it, um, and then they'd send out the me these messages, and they wouldn't get anything. 
Um, or, they w or the only people they would get would be one or two people who filtered in for a couple of emails. A lot of them got some thank yous, but from people who had already decided it wasn't for them anymore. Um, and so we had this really quick drop off, drop off in active guides. Um, and so we quickly tried to start looking at ways that we could, um, in sort of new ways that we could uh, pick the groups. But the problem was that there wasn't any really great way. So that second group that we had, that second cohort that we had, we said, okay, 10, 15 people was too many. So we have to, it was too few, like nobody responded. And so we have, why don't we have a, a, a big giant group, we'll get a large group of 50 people, send, send that out to each, each new user or each editor, and then, and then we'll start from there. That way we'll have at least some responses. The problem there is that it actually, it increased the sort of front loaded work for the new editors. So the emails would actually go out much slower because you'd have to have per these personalized emails about something. Because we always try to encourage for every email that's coming out, it's, it's specific. It's like, oh, I saw you made this edit, or you get, you, this page got deleted, here's why, and trying to offer some help for that. And those take a long, period, long amount of time. Um, but in every little thing that we did sort of made, the overhead was huge. So every cohort that we did would take multiple days out of my time to try to organize and try to get it set. Um, and it just ended up not being sustainable in the long run, um, which was real, was real disheartening, both for me and for them. Yeah. And then I'm gonna start here on the slides, but I think we have more to talk about. Um, I think the biggest things we learned was how, why certain pieces of what we tried didn't work. Um, we, lo we learned a lot of interesting things. We learned that reaching out, once you, once you connected somebody was important, um, but the biggest problem was that we had to do it as quickly as we could, and in a sort of broad, very organized way like this, it, we weren't going fast enough. We just couldn't keep up. Um, we couldn't get users who had just created, because then we'd have to figure out if they'd edited, and the, the overhead wasn't working, at least, especially since so much of it was manual. Um, and even when we filtered through, we tried different options. We had the big, big chunks. Later on, we tried, we, we tried to say, hey, here's a, here's a group that has edited multiple articles. Um, and that, so it was a smaller subsection. We thought maybe that, that would get more of a response, but it really still had the same big issues. Um, and the biggest thing was that the new users just left too quickly. We didn't catch them up. Um, and it wasn't sustainable. So the biggest issue, biggest thing that came up was, can we do some automation? And where is the automation going to help and where is it gonna hurt and where's that balance? Um, like the biggest worry I have about automation, the biggest worry I know I hear from people is that that's sort of very impersonal. People, people don't like necessarily sort of automated welcomes or something like that. Um, but the other side is that is somebody reaching, that is somebody reaching out. They could reply, we could, if we had them reply to an automated email, for example, that went to a real person or went, went to somebody who wanted to help guide, maybe we could get them in that way. Um, but that we need, so, that maybe there, an option would be trying to find these sort of key points and say, hey, you've made your, f your fifth edit. Thank you, this is great options. You have any questions, you have any issues, you can go here. Um, some way to reach out. Um, because when we were looking at sort of the research later on after this, we found like welcomes were very tough. Like you know, if you look at talk pages, if you're looking at people who are editing, um, there's the sort of two key, key areas. Somebody either gets a welcome as their first talk page edit, or they don't really get a welcome at all. So if there's, if there's another comment or if there's a, uh, a warning, they never get welcomed because people, people tended to welcome when they saw the red link. Um, and so once the page was created, they never got welcomed, and they just got warnings, or they just got other notes. Um, and so some way to sort of reach out and get them help, um, which we really don't have right now. Everything we do is reactive, um, and we did have that success when we tried to proactively reach out, but we couldn't do it fast enough. There just wasn't enough people. Nobody reached that auto-confirmed four-day um, threshold. They just weren't there. Um, and even when they were there, they were only creating a couple edits. They hadn't really gotten their fields. Um, the other issue we had is that there was a lot of interested editors. But the more experienced those editors were, the busier they were. And so we had a lot of really experienced users who were really interested in what we were doing. Um, but we 
came in the idea with something much, we wanted to do something much more concrete and focused and specialized, um, which would require a commitment of a, of a bunch of time. It would require a couple hours a week to sit there and send out the emails and try to talk, talk with, the, uh, with the new users. And talking with the users wasn't usually the issue. The issue was sitting down there and doing the repetitive work of a bunch of emails and looking through the contributions and writing, the pa and writing, up, their, uh, writing up their notes. Um, and they had lots of other stuff to do. And so we lost them a lot there. They were very interested, they were very good at giving back feedback um, and wanting to know how it was going. But the people who were most actually free to do a lot of that stuff were the less experienced users um, who, had a lot of, who had a lot of good energy and actually I think did help a lot, but they didn't know the community as, mu as well. So it was a little bit harder that they knew their little sort of subsection when somebody came in from military history, but they were English, they didn't really know how to make those connections, something that one of the two or three year um, editors did know. Um, and so trying to make all those connections, which they were able to do at some level, but it was much harder, um, never really came into play. Um, and then the biggest lesson I think I learned is trying to make sure that when we did anything like this, to have ways for editors to do it on the side. Um, where, where people can come in and do little sprints. Um, and I think a lot of our big, um, big projects do that quite well. If you want to do Huggle, if you want to do um, New Page Patrol, if you want to do a backlog, you can go and you can work on it for 10 minutes, you can work on it for an hour, and you're going to have something, you're going to feel successful. Um, unfortunately, when we set this up, that really wasn't the case. So you came in and, uh, and you had an assignment and you never really got to the place. And once, by the time we started figuring that out, it was too late. We'd already lost them. Um, so we'd sent out the emails, and we just had most of our guides were gone, and so we were trying to find the new place. Um, so I think we learned a lot. Unfortunately, we did, um, which is the biggest thing. And so I, wanted, I, I don't want to say it was a failure. It didn't get, get exactly where we wanted it to, but it got the data, which is what, really what we wanted to. We wanted to see where this was going to be successful, w why this idea would work, wouldn't work, um, and where we could bring it as we were going forward. Um, I guess from there, I'd like to open it up to just more questions and comments. I, my idea for this was to try to get a little bit of a discussion going, because um, I think a lot of people have ideas and options of where this is going to come. Um, I think that'll end up going better than me talking for 45 minutes. Anybody? Yeah, uh, the question was if we had any idea of why we couldn't get the, uh, um, the, edit, the experienced users. I think it's mostly just because they were so busy. Um, I think the problem was that we had, so we, we had this work that required sort of, at, especially at the beginning, 10 to 15 hours when we hadn't really realized that was way too much, even spread over a week. Um, and we tried to tone it down, but uh, they had a lot of other work. They were administrators. They had their wiki projects, their articles that they wanted, to, they, they worked on. Um, and frequently, to be honest, they, they were in, at some level busier in the, in the sort of outside world as well. They had, had, they had their time and they spent a lot of time on wiki, but the vast majority of the time on wiki was subsectioned. They hadn't found their, they had already found their niches, while the users who were only a month or two old um, hadn't found those big niches yet, and so their wiki time wasn't sort of established yet. Um, and so they were very interested, but they already had commitments. Yeah, the question was if, uh, if a video would be a better as sort of a welcome um, than text. I think there's a been a lot of op ideas like that. I know in the article creation project, they were looking at a video. I don't know if they ended up doing the video test. Do you know, Philippe? Uh, they did? No.
Yeah, I think that was video. I, I've always loved videos, but I think that I think that's the biggest problem is that you're sitting there, you're watching all this, but it's you get distracted. <laughs> um, the more the more links you have. Yeah, I think that could it, it could be. There's a lot of places we could we could develop from that. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. Um, I'm not sure if I can. I'd have to find one. Um, yeah, I can walk you through. I can walk you through it definitely, because we had a bunch of them who copied us in, which was great on emails. Um, the biggest things is they, a lot of them ended up doing most of the communication through email. Um, we sort of had, which which we kind of expected at some level, um, but it has sort of its strengths and weaknesses. Um, so the, the big thing we did want to focus was on email at that time. So sort of everybody welcomed on, they welcomed on the talk page, and then they sent out an email, um, usually with pretty much the same text. Um, and they essentially all responded by email. Um, and so even, even we actually had a bunch of, we had a bunch of the wiki guides who gave links and sort of said, hey, you can respond to me on your talk page. And they all responded by email. The email was much more comfortable, I think, for them. Um, we did have, we sort of, we had a portion of them who would respond who were just sort of thanking us mostly. Um, the ones who had questions, they, they would come back and they, they tended to have sort of, they had long in-depth conversations. The new, the, new user, the new users, they really wanted to do this. And it was quite obvious that they had thought about it a lot. Um, and so they would come back and say, okay, well, this, is, this was my issue. This is what I was trying to do. Can you, can you help me? Um, depending on the user, we had a couple um, interactions where they were helped find references and show them how to use the ref. Um, toolbar. I remember one guide who really loved the ref toolbar, which I do as well, and so would would walk walk people through it um, because that tended to be one of the biggest things usually um, was just getting references on on an article, um, and then they'd go back and forth, especially with um, it seemed that the most likely group that would respond back were sort of corporations and people who were making making articles. Actually, frequently, incredibly, like they they wanted to do it non point of view. They wanted. Like they were actually usually um, notable. They, they deserved an article, um, but they didn't know how to do it. Um, and that's what they were trying to get through. Um, and I think part of that's probably just because they had the biggest reason to come back. Um, and so even after they had left and given up, when they got the email, they said, oh, and then they responded back. Um, and they actually, the, the guides universally were really, really quite amazing. They all had, they all had their own different ways and how they wa wanted to reach out. They wanted to help. They all had the, their own little focuses, um, but they were all actually very good in very different, in very different ways. Um, and it was actually, it was, it was interesting to me to see how young, I guess, wiki young most of them were. Um, the ones who sort of sucked through it were all sort of a couple months old, but were really interested in it. And I think were learning just as much helping as, they, as, uh, as the new users were. Um, because they'd reach out and they'd ask for help and they'd try to get an admin's assistance. Um, but the, the, the issue was frequently that it, it took a lot of time. So even when they only had one or two come back, that person would take 
days worth of time because they'd end up coming and they'd go talk to uh, um, they'd go talk to admins to try to figure out what the what the deleted article was and figure out what the issues were and then try to try to walk them through that um, and frequently they were trying to sort of figure it out themselves as well. Uh, Philippe, uh, <laughs> Hello? Yeah. I'll step out. Uh -oh. Yeah, it is. Let me grab I can put it up. It's really, it's quite wonderful. Yeah. 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 Who, who stayed? Um, It ended up being about a 3% difference oh, in the first groups that we had. It ended up going down, I think, mostly just because we sort of ran out of steam. Yeah, I had heard about it, and I actually am really interested in hearing more. Um, I'd sort of heard bits and snippets of it, both as we were developing this and as we went along. Um, I hadn't heard that it was 10, 15% now, which is great. That's, that's tremendous. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little bit of a different so the self selection. Um, the, yeah, so she was saying that so the German group the uh, the German guide group, they the self selected, so they get a message and say, Hey, do you want a mentor? You can come here and sign up. Um, and so it's a it's a slight it's a different selection group. Um, though I think it's a very interesting one to think about. Um, we have the sort of adopt a user program. Though I don't think it's I don't think it's probably not uh, advertised nearly as much as it could. It's yeah, and it, yeah, it hasn't had nearly. The way I think we could probably learn a lot from that. Um, there's a lot of things. I, I think that was certainly a possibility. We ended up not sort of having the technical ability to do it at the time, um, but I think it's it's things like that where we're gonna tr where if we want to try try this again, or if we want to try um, sort of successors to it, um, it's trying to find ways to get a little bit more of an automated system so that we can get in there really really early. Um, like we we had that was our biggest weakness is that it just when we wanted to get bigger groups, we wanted to get bigger. Uh, sort of targets um, and to, to get the data, which is what our goal was, um, it took too long. And so they were just gone. Uh, most people, the vast majority of them were gone within a day of their first edit. Um, it, and it cut half again the second day, cut in half again the third day. And so by the time you're there for your fourth day or so, really only one or 2% of the, the group was, ever, was even editing. And then you had the issue of only some of them responded.
Yeah. Right. And so if the, let me, um, I'll put up the graph again in a second, but they had, it, it's, some of them definitely come back at some level, um, but the vast majority of them, at least o as we were watching them over the course of about three months, um, most of them didn't. So we'd start off, if we start off with 200 users in the cohort, we'd have 200 of them editing, because we'd only picked ones who had edited that first day. The next day, no more than about 50 of them would be editing. The next day, no more than 20 of them. And it would never go, go above 20 again. It would, it would just keep going down. And so eventually, about three, four weeks down the road, only two or three of them would edit a day. Um, and sometimes, obviously, they're not always the same, but they usually were. It was usually two or three that came in and ended up being the big active ones in that group. Um, I've avoided this level, if there's anybody on that side. <laughs> Is it? Oh. Oh. Our, our very first cohort, our very first group, we did any edit. Um, our, our, our first change we put in there as the filter was only main space edits. Um, so we, we, that, was, that was one of the first cuts we made, um, which I actually didn't say. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think that's definitely true. That's how I was. <laughs> um, that's how I started, mostly. Um, and I think we, we didn't really focus on them as much. Um, that was probably a group that would, would have been good to focus on. Um, we've, I've certainly, at least completely anecdotally, I don't have evidence for this, at least on English Wikipedia, seen a decrease in the amount of people who start off on the discussion page. Um, I think a couple of years ago, that was much more common. Yep. Yeah, there's, least, there's always at least something there. Um, and, for, and for a complicated article, it ends up with a lot on, on there, which can become slightly, uh, slightly intimidating, maybe, maybe even more so than the actual article itself. Anybody else? Questions? Well, if that's it, then that's probably it. Anybody else? All right. What's that? Okay, thanks a lot for Mr. James Alexander. And now I'd like to invite Mr. M the German Wikipedian, Nicole Eber, right? right? Okay, so welcome her. Jokes, please. Not yet. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, so hello everybody. I'm Nicole Eber and I'm a project manager at Wikimedia Germany and I'm talking about Wikipedia and beyond incentivizing engagement today. And first of all, I have to say that it's a bit hard for me to, to talk right after a native speaker and I try my very best and I hope you bear with me if I'm out of words somewhere during my presentation. And um, if you like to read more and add your own thoughts pro to this talk, um, feel free to use this Etherpad um, right now or after my talk. Um, yeah, like I said, I work for Wikimedia Germany as a project manager, and Wikimedia Germany was founded in 2004 and is an improved nonprofit organization. I am working in the Berlin office together with 20 other employees and we have around 100, uh, 1,200 members um, as of today. And of course, thousands of volunteers working at, in the Wikimedia projects. Um, and yeah, there are very important questions um, we have to deal with in our everyday work. For example, what, um, what do the volunteers spend on the projects and how can we support them? And um, of course, why do they participate? And yeah, first of all, the, the volunteers are very passionate about the projects. And um, yeah, they have an, a lot of knowledge which they like to share and they have a lot of skills to add to the project. And of course, they spend a lot of time on the project, but time is a very limited resource and so everyone has to decide um, where to dedicate her or his time on. Um, yeah, and here's how we, we try and offer to support them spending more time on the Wikimedia project or other free po projects, for example, uh, with our infrastructure like, um, yeah, like technical equipment or other office supplies or with um, communication with other contacts or with um, authorities or partners and other experts. With our experience in different fields of work because we are many employees with many different exper experience. And um, of course with our money. Um, we like to, uh, or we, we are supporting them with travel costs like we did for example for this Wikimania. We had a scholarship um, where volunteers can, could apply for and yeah, we can buy s equipment or books or access to online resources and help volunteers to realize their own projects. And um, yeah, as a, as a chapter we definitely have the finan financial resources and manpower to support the community in these ways, but um, no, no but. And, and we have developed different programs to incentivize the engagement for these uh, free projects. But first of all, I like to do a very little bit of these interactive stuff and ask you why you contribute to free knowledge. And of course, my first question is, do you contribute because you want to support free knowledge? So just show your hands. Okay, that's very good to see. And yeah, do you, do you think that um, being part of a bigger whole would also be a, a, an incentive for you than just do it again? <laughs> and um, yeah, do you find that um, your work being appreciated is also a very high uh, motivation for you? Okay. And do you also want to help others with contributing? Okay, a bit more. Okay, great. And yeah, do you, do you probably think that it's fun and that all your friends are there and you, yeah, okay, good. And um, do you also find it, ve it very motivating to competing with others? Okay, <laughs> thanks. And what would, uh, would, what would the motivation be if you can win a prize? Would this be a motivation for you? Very interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay, just no, I, because I'd like to give you a brief overview of uh, three projects we were um, we we did, uh, which were, were meant to engage people to contribute, and I can say now that the two of them were, or th the, uh, these all these three were contests where you can probably also win prizes. So. You, Let's see what we're up to. First of all, the is it is the sound okay? By the way, 
Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, okay, good. Okay. Okay. I was fearing to lose my voice during this talk, but at the moment it seems... Yeah, there's water, I, I know, but... Okay. Um, the Zedler Medal um, was given out four times already, and the, the goal of this medal was to engage external experts from um, the scientific community to participate. And the best scientific Wikipedia article in uh, different categories like natural science and humanities was meant to win a prize of 2,000 euros each. So each uh, person who won the first prize um, was awarded with 2,000 euros. And um, we didn't pay these 2,000 euros, but the prize was always sponsored, um, yeah, sponsored by sponsors or by partners like an academy or a publishing house or a chemical research company because we said we don't want to pay 2,000 euros for an article, so to say, but if, spon if you have sponsors who um, support you in the, in the contest, that will be okay. And um, last year, we really enhanced our promotional efforts and, or efforts, and um, we talked to many universities, to professors, to the community, and to friends, and asked them, hey, go ahead, write an article, just I don't, I don't know, I've been talking to a few friends of mine who are working on their, on their th thesis at the moment and said, why don't you just sit down for a weekend and write your, um, the topic that you're dealing with for the last years now and write an article about it. And you can win 2,000 euros. And um, it, it didn't really work out. Like in the, in the past um, years, we only had less than 30 submissions in this contest. And, um, and the articles were almost all written by, by, yeah, by, by Wikipedians, sorry. And um, so, yeah, the goals we wanted to reach were not reached. Now I show you a few nice pictures from the, from the festive ceremony. We had, um, we had, um, we had a festive uh, ceremony um, with a, with a panel discussion which was really good. Uh, the people found, it, found the event very good and were happy to be there and discuss with other people and got, got to no, get to know some Wikipedians. But the contest was, yeah, was not very successful. And after three years of t trying different met methods, we really had to say that the former goals could not really be reached by this contest. And we are now planning to relaunch the medal in 2011 as an award for free knowledge. So it's a bit more of an inner perspective. Um, like, okay, I, in my notes I said like the Oscar probably. Probably in some years it would be as well known as the Oscar is, but um, we're still working on it. And um, the prize is now targeting projects, portals, groups, and um, yeah, groups in and also beyond Wikipedia, b beyond the Wikipedia community uh, who did a trend tremendous effort in supporting free knowledge projects during the last 12 months. So there's no contest where, where we say, okay, start now, write an article, but we say, if you did a great work during the last 12 months, you can be nominated to win this prize. And um, there will be diff different categories like best projects in the Wikiversum, best project to boost free knowledge, or best external use of Wikipedia content, for example. So if you're interested in this, just follow the discussion which is still going on. Yeah, this is, yeah, we are still discussing if it's only German language or if it's, um, we said that we would also um, award projects who probably bring something good for the G German speaking uh, project. So you can also hand in like one example for, um, for me, one example would be Wikilove's Monuments last year in the Netherlands. It was um, a Dutch contest, but, also, but it has good influence on the, uh, on the German project as well, and is this year coming to the European stage. So that, this would also, uh, yes, this would also be one of the award. Uh, I'm out of words now, but okay, you, I think you, you know what I mean. Um, okay, and I'd like to present another contest. Oh, you have a question? Yes, I still have a question. Um, so it, it's just a, a, a clarification question. So you're talking about free knowledge, and you're saying that you, will, uh, you, are, uh, uh, you want to also give the prize probably not to Wikipedians, but to, to some scientific uh, groups. So how do you define free knowledge? Then? Because most of the people who work at the universities, they uh, publish their articles and they put them 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, for example, we, we, that's a, a very good question and it's not always that easy to define what free knowledge is, but we said if the license used is CC by SA or even freer than this license, then it is free knowledge for us. No, it doesn't have to be explicitly a Creative Commons, but it has to be compat compat uh, compatible with uh, these licenses. Okay? Okay, so another contest we started um, very spontaneously last year. Um, some of us had the idea and we said, ah, let's, let's just uh, find a logo and write a nice text and then start the contest, which was really cool to work on this project. Um, the contest was, is called Wissenswert and um, it is meant to kickstart ideas to become great free, culture, uh, free knowledge projects. And this is not a, a prize, but a grant. So we offered projects up to 5,000 euros to realize their, their ideas. And um, the application was open for one month and we gathered 39 submissions, which I find is a quite nice number in the first round. And, and what did I say? Ah, okay. <laughs> so 93 is right. Um, sorry. Um, okay, we had uh, 93 submis submissions, but to be honest, nearly half of them weren't really aware what free, what free knowledge meant. And I remember a phone call when someone uh, just told me, yeah, of course we publish uh, the results on our website and everyone can read them. You, uh, you, you um, don't want others to use your content and, and even sell it, or do you? And I said, yeah, yes, that's what our projects are about. So there were people, many people um, who didn't really get it and that also shows again that it's very important to, do, to raise the awareness of, uh, about free knowledge and free licenses. Okay, and um, what was also very interesting that most of the submis submissions came from non-Wikipedians, but from other communities like the Creative Commons or Open Design or Free Culture and Free Software um, movements. And um, there, there was a jury and also an open voting and they choose eight winning projects and we are now financially supporting these projects and also supervising them. We're trying to help them. Some of them are very autark and want to do their projects all alone and some of them are working a bit closer together with us and um, the projects, the, the contest gained some very nice uh, social media coverage, m many blogs and tweets and so on were um, saying that they really like the idea and um, we are now working on optimizing and continuing the contest in 2011 and let me just show you um, some or show you some of the projects one is a, a film about creative commons licenses which was just released last last week um, and on the upper right there's a an audio studio in Cologne uh, to rec record spoken Wikipedia articles and the clue uh, is that the, the audio studio is portable so you can carry it in a box and send it to other projects who want to record some, some free, free content. And um, there's also a public domain project to digitalize old shellac records which is quite a quite cool thing. and. Um, a website Libre project that uh, lists many free projects and alternative alternatives to proprietary self proprietary sorry <laughs> proprietary software. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Question. Not, uh, not on, yeah, for German speaking, that, that was for German speaking people only, yes. Yeah. Um, okay, and now I want to hear some <laughs> shouting from the back. <laughs> There's uh, another very successful project which is not held by Wikimedia Do uh, Deutschland, but um, we are jumping in this year. It's Wikilove's Monuments. I bet you. I, who have, hasn't heard of Wikilove's Monuments? Okay, not many, okay. <laughs> um, it's a photo contest for monuments and it started in 2010 in the, ne in the Netherlands. And um, what I find the great thing about this is that everyone can, p can participate. Just uh, 
grab your camera, leave your house and find a monument just in your hometown and just take the picture, upload it to comments and then you participate in the contest. And um, the, the prizes were non-monetary. I think, it is it right that it was an iPad or is it the right uh, information? Okay, sorry, great. Um, and other non-monetary prizes and I think it's more about this hunting and gathering thing which uh, motivated people to, to contribute. And the number is very it, wonderful. It's 12,500 12, photos were submitted and they had a great uh, press coverage. And in 2011, the, the contest goes to or enters the European stage and um, that's where Wikimedia Germany and 16 other chapters joined in and um, volunteers are very busy preparing and working on this contest and the contest starts in September. So these were the three kinds of contests and prizes we are, were working on and just to, to sum these up, two th there was a 2,000 euro prize for one article and one person, a 5,000 euro grant to realize a project more collaboratively and um, non-monetary prizes for hunting and gathering. And of course, it is not rocket science uh, that money is not the core motivator for um, contributing to these projects. But um, as we, and as we also heard in um, the, the keynote, Jochai Benkler's speech, he said that money can also be very dangerous for, volunteer, uh, for, for a volunteer environment. But by enabling people to realize their favorite projects, I think it helps a lot and even if you're a small chapter and don't have the money on your own or don't have the resources, you'd probably find a sponsor or partner for the money part and engage the people with your means. So I would like to encourage you to be bold and to just try things and okay, if they doesn't work then end them and try another one because I don't think you have many things to lose if you just try and do different things and what I also... Um, I'm not really sure if you can, if we can really compare our com the communities because the German community, as you might probably have heard, is a bit special and um, their, the motivation um, is probably different to other communities, but I think we can... <coughs> okay, now I'm at the point where I'm probably losing my voice. Um, but I, I think we can really learn from each other and share our thoughts and ideas and experiences. And, and yeah, now I would really like to hear what you, um, which, which experience you um, made with contests or competitions. And um, I'd also be happy to, to continue this talk later on. We can use the Etherpad or we can meet here or just keep in touch and um, Another hour? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so for further information, of course, our, uh, you can use our website. There's the information, but only on, in German, of course. And there's also the, the link to the Etherpad. And you can, of course, reach me via email. And we also, of course, use Twitter and Facebook. And, um, okay. Now I'd like to hear your experience uh, with competitions and incentives and I wrote some of the chapters down which I know that they are also uh, did some contests and probably it would be probably easy if someone has to wants to um, wants to talk about his contest if he just joins me on sh on stage and talk to the other people because it's easier because I don't think anyone can hear you if you're sitting in the in the in the audience so I think, yeah, we don't have we don't have a spare mic. That's a problem. So I know that Wikimedia Italy probably, if you want to uh, talk, just only one or two minutes, or the Wiki Love Monu Loves Monuments guys probably. Um, I don't know if is is anyone from Wikimedia UK here? Okay, because they um, they uh, added something to the Etherpad as well, and probably if Danny wants to add something, just come and join me on stage. I mean, I, it was supposed to be a workshop, but it's a bit harder to have a workshop here on the stage, so just so join me and we can talk. Wow. Okay, so well, mm, I don't know what to say about our words. 
Uh, we have tried some of them um, starting in 2009 with the Wikimedia Italia Award. And initially, uh, I thought about it as a way to um, get some users, Wikimedians, members or not members, to help us finding uh, museums or other um, probably small entities, cultural institutions, which could cooperate with us with um, some glam, as we call them now, projects. And although those users were not able to actually um, achieve such uh, partnerships. Um, so I wanted to crowdsource the uh, gathering of ideas of projects, giving some through the competition. But that wasn't in the end impossible, so we just had a quite messy award with um, some 20 categories and um, perhaps a hundred submissions, but as with the Zedler medal, probably just uh, pr mostly Wikimedians uh, we, we, who submitted th things they would have done anyway, so it wasn't a, a big uh, success, and I would call it failure. And the next year, so we tried with some more specific categories, with some uh, cultural institutions. And um, again, uh, we, get, we got only um, a few submissions, and they were mostly our friend organization, which were already using free licenses. And so I don't know whether it really helped, and so this year we have changed again, and we are trying with schools. Uh, actually, I don't know the details because I'm not managing this project, but uh, I know that uh, within our um, school project, we are trying to, we have set up some sort of competition between schools, and, or perhaps classes within the schools. And we, we will have some uh, money award. I don't know exactly the details. And we will see if, if this year will work better. <laughs> yeah, I, I do not want to talk too much about Wikilas monuments, if you don't mind, because we have tomorrow a separate session about it. So I don't want to spoil your fun. Definitely come there tomorrow, 11 o'clock, in the Rappaport. But um, I think, uh, in general, um, the, the most important thing I th always uh, try to keep in mind when uh, thinking about contests is that it's very important to keep things simple. Keep it really simple. People can understand it very easily. They can join very easily. And um, that, that's a general lesson that works all over the world, I guess. And I'm not sure, is there anyone from Wikimedia Indonesia here? because they are basically our writing contest champions here in, in the Wikimedia world. And it's really interesting. I think you should really try to involve yeah. them. They have had three major writing contests uh, in the past year. And uh, what they had is um, they involved lots of universities. And they tried to, uh, in the first contest, they tried to make universities uh, have a contest against each other as well a bit so that there is a bit of pride involved. Like, I want my university to win. No, I want my university to win. And in another contest, they had, like, within a university, they had lots of students competing against each other. And I think both models can very well work, because it's not always about big prizes. It's not always about uh, having big sums of money. I'm always, I myself am not a big fan of, of money awards. I always like stuff, like, like little things you can put. It, it can be worth nothing. It can be something that you put on your shelf and you just look at it, you can say, ha, that's something I won. And money, yeah, you spend on, on something and it's gone. And it's not, it's not uh, very special. So, so that's, that's something I would like to, to bring into the discussion. And I would really like to hear some more thoughts about the whole uh, money versus, um, versus goods question. Because I wonder is that, is, if that's a cultural thing or if it's more like a general Wikipedian thing. 
think that, that is before uh, we start presenting yours, that's a very good question, which does anyone have to add uh, something about this money and um, material price thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. Barrier, probably. Mm. Yeah, so it's it's more of a motivation to have lower prices than such high. Yeah, yeah. Abschreckend. Ja. Okay. Come, come to stage if you want, if you like. Two times I participated at the uh, uh, SILA. Uh, I have to step up. Oh my god, I'm too little. Uh, two times I participated for the SILA medal, and uh, for s uh, the first time I was at the uh, fourth place, and I was very, very happy with it. And it was fun to write, and it was. I don't need the money. The second time I, I, I wrote again. And I, I don't know why I won. And it, it was not bad to get the money. It, it wasn't bad. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not, not what, I, what I want to say. I, I want to say it's not bad to get the money, but I don't wrote for the money. Uh, money is, well, it's okay. But, but it's not the, not the cause because we, we all here writing articles, write articles, I think. Yes. We never, never, ever get new editors about uh, with such programs. Never. Yeah, okay, that's we, a we, we so often try that this is not the way we get new, new authors. Uh, actually, it's a fact, and maybe it's a challenge for the future to change it. Yeah, hi, I'm Bala from uh, Tamil Wikipedia and English Wikipedia. And I joined, I was an editor in the English Wikipedia and I went to edit the Tamil Wikipedia because I participated in a contest, writing the specific writing contest for monetary gain organized by the Tamilpedians. It was sponsored, my native tongue is Tamil, but I, I was uncomfortable in writing Tamil. And uh, uh, the uh, Tamil Wikipedia in partnership with the government of Tamil Nadu, which is a state in India, the government of Tamil Nadu sponsored a writing contest in uh, Tamil Wikipedia and uh, uh, it announced a laptop as a first prize for uh, uh, who wrote a good article. So I was in need of a laptop then. Uh, so the, as the material incentive drove me to participate in the Tamil Wikipedia and yes, uh, I think the question was whether do, do you get uh, uh, new participants because of material uh, incentive? The uh, answer is standing before you. Uh, uh, by the way, I didn't get the laptop. I didn't win. But I uh, went on to stay in the, the Tamilpedia, and I am an administrator now there. Uh, and uh, <laughs> when I applied for Wikimania, uh, in, the, in the space for home Wikipedia, I put in Tamil Wikipedia there. So I'm more active there in, there in, in Wiki than in uh, Tamilpedia. The uh, fascinating, pa fascinating part is none of the winners None of the people who wrote the better articles stayed, stayed on to edit Tamil Wikipedia. But me, who wrote, uh, who, who wrote a lot of losing entries, it was, like, it was not restricted to one per person. I wrote like, uh, I tried to brute force 50 articles, <laughs> trying to gain that uh, uh, laptop, elusive laptop. And uh, one of the judges, 
who played a part in uh, denying me that laptop. Both of us are now regular contributors in Pedia, and we have more than like, uh, I have around uh, 30,000 edits and 600 articles in Tamil Pedia, and he has around like 5,000 edits and uh, 150 articles in the Tamil Pedia. Brute force rules. <laughs> So the, uh, the answer is yes. Maybe it's a cultural thing. For a laptop for me, is, it costs about $300. $300 is quite a bit when you adjust for purchasing power parity to Tamil Nadu. So to, to India, adjust for purchase power PPP in India. So monetary thing is, is a factor. You cannot reject it outright saying that it's not there. The second thing is, let, let me finish, please. This, this, the second thing is, even, even though the, the winners and the uh, serious participants did not stay on to contribute, the contest raised the visibility of the Tamil Wikipedia. The, we, uh, the smaller Wikipedia suffer from this lack of visibility. Uh, people say that the English is always the knowledge, uh, language of knowledge, so we don't need uh, uh, Wikipedia and the smaller, smaller projects. But this contest for, uh, was for university uh, college students, and then it was expanded to the public. So this contest increase the visibility uh, where it, uh, uh, through offline efforts, which this visibility would not be, we would not be able to reach using online methods. So a monetary gain opens, the, a monetary incentive opens a lot of doors in certain places. I wouldn't say, I don't know about Europe or the West, or where, uh, where the altruistic motive is already there. You have already a culture of, uh, uh, activism and uh, free knowledge and creative commons and all those things. But where, coming from a place where I come from, come from uh, organized activism where it is less, in the sense, for free knowledge, monetary, monetary incentive opens a lot of doors. And the second thing I want to say is what he said, keep the thing simple. That was the thing we learned from our contest. We unnecessarily complicated the contest. We thought that uh, having, it, having the art, uh, editors directly edit Wikipedia would be too much for them to learn uh, markup, to learn the, uh, to have a cons constant internet access, and all those things we consider, and we made it an offline contest. Like they can co create an, uh, a Word document and they upload it into a third party site, which had nothing to do with Wikipedia itself. So they write a, just a, two, a Word document, they upload it somewhere, we'll download it, we'll print it out, we'll send it to the judges, and they judge it, and then we upload it. This, has, this unnecessarily complicated, uh, complicated the whole process, added many layers of bureaucracy and work to it. So uh, as, uh, I can't pronounce your name, uh, sorry. As our Dutch friend uh, uh, brilliantly put it, keep it simple. So if any other chapters or any other um, uh, uh, projects are looking at contests, I would suggest them make the uh, editor, make the contestant edit as much possible within the project not, uh, and follow them, fo follow them up saying, uh, once they are uh, uploaded and they uh, don't make it as a, what do we say, fire and forget thing, just save and they go away. Don't make it, make it like this. Uh, involve contest rules in such a way that uh, give, uh, I think they do it in NWiki, Wiki Cup, right? More and more, uh, more, more, and more uh, uh, participation so that they, they get hooked onto the Wiki. This is what we learned from the 2010 Tamil Wikipedia contest. Can I just ask one short question? Yeah, sure. Did you, did you have many small prizes or one big prize? Um, it's, uh, since it was the government, it said one thing and did another thing. Uh, the, uh, the, first, the announced prizes were, laptop were, three prizes were announced. A laptop, a, laptop, a digital camera, mm, I forgot the third one. Uh, I, I wasn't interested in that, so I forgot the third one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, but uh, the uh, quality entries were naturally more. So they, they couldn't settle for three prices. So instead, what they did is they um, they they gave ten prices of ten thousand rupees each. It's around two hundred dollars. So ten prices of ten thousand rupees each. So it was it, it worked out on this. The sponsorship was around one lakh rupees. So we ended up giving ten prices. I need to type blind. Cross me if I'm wrong there, please. Okay. Uh, we've done a writing contest 
on uh, Czech Wikipedia. It has been inspired by Nicole. What's the name of your content? I can't pronounce it. Uh, Schrieb, whatever. <laughs> Schreibwettbewerb. <laughs> and uh, hold a second, I'll first find the page for that. Where's the mouse? Yes, that's a good idea. Okay, while it loads. So, uh, we've been addressed by uh, one bank uh, as a sponsor, and that bank uh, said, like, uh, we took a look on Wikipedia, and uh, you don't have so many articles about, like, economy and bank sector and uh, all this stuff around. We would like to support it somehow. What would be the best way? And uh, then uh, they said they, of uh, they offered us some uh, budget, uh, so we could like support this. Uh, we said like uh, we would like to extend it to uh, support like creation of basically article of any topic and uh, uh, they eventually agreed so we've got the budget and uh, the rules were uh, there was uh, some kind of uh, organization committee which created a list of Articles now there most of them are blue, but they were most of them red actually. This is the fourth round actually running already and There are like three groups of of articles. The first one is uh, like humanity Sciences and this the third one. I mean the second one. Sorry is the natural sciences and the third one is like the, the bank sector economy and uh, this stuff now uh, the rule is, yeah. Thanks. Uh, basically, there are rules. Uh, they are very simple, um, as it's been mentioned here. Um, we st uh, have a, st a starting date. We have a ending date, and uh, people are supposed to write uh, these articles, which are either missing or they are very short stops. Uh, basically, uh, most of these articles are supposed to cover whatever is being learned, I mean taught in uh, high schools or lower. So we want to have like all everything what is in uh, being taught in high schools, we want to have it covered. So uh, within the period of time, uh, uh, editors uh, are writing and then uh, the jury, which is, uh, which is um, composed of uh, um, another editors who are known like uh, writers of uh, good articles, featured articles and, and things like that. Uh, then they go and uh, pass these articles, uh, review them and uh, then they uh, set up a order of uh, sort of winners. Now, um, what we wanted to do is, uh, we, uh, because the budget was pretty, pretty big, uh, we decided rather to award more people with uh, smaller prices than to like sort of overwhelm like uh, only first three persons uh, with big, very big uh, prices. Uh, each, uh, each group of articles has uh, their own uh, list of winners. So um, I can go down, Where is page down here. <laughs> Okay. Oh. Yeah, I got, I got the mouse. Never mind. I'll, I'll f there we go. Uh, so uh, each uh, each uh, group has their own uh, winners, and uh, uh, the first prize uh, was a netbook. We actually, as you can see, we have a site notice for that, so we are heavily promoting that on uh, Wikimedia projects. But that's also one thing I would like to mention. Uh, if you are doing the writing contest, don't forget about the promotion. You know, you you want ex um, not only on like uh, projects of Wikimedia Foundation, but you want to promote it. Like we uh, we started to thought about like uh, printing leaflets and putting them into university campuses and, and so on. Uh, did you have a question?
Yes, that's what I was about also to get there because uh, obviously we got the sponsors which were commercials. One of them was actually Microsoft. So <laughs> it's actually written there. <laughs> anyway, uh, so um, we have a winner of one prize of the first prize. You can you come here, Peter, for a second? Yeah. Um, the first prize was Netbook. Uh, this, uh, and there were like other prices which uh, were like uh, we also uh, went uh, the way it's not uh, strictly monetary uh, it's netbook it was uh, like uh, coupons vouchers to buy books in a bookstore we were trying to stick into the knowledge that means like uh, go the way like books and and encyclopedias and and whatever can be with computers uh, computer accessories and so on, because everything that can help to continue working on Wikipedia as well. Now, uh, the price, interesting thing is, we didn't know uh, before the very first round, we didn't know uh, what will be the, the price, like they have the medal. Do I pronounce yeah. right, medal? Okay. Right. And uh, so we were thinking about what to do. Eventually, we created this. It's a it's a glass uh, um, cube, not not cube, whatever is that, prism, right? And it's got uh, it's via laser in inside. It's uh, it says like price for enhancing of check uh, Wikipedia and there's the Wikipedia logo. Now when we published the picture of this, some people were like, "Ooh, I don't care about notebook. I don't care about Microsoft thingies." Or Coupons, but I really want to have this glass on my shelf. And, I have it. <laughs> and he has it, yes. <laughs> now, uh, actually, Peter uh, won the first round, right? And uh, he eventually turned to be uh, in a jury of, of the next round. So, uh, what, that's also what we are trying to do like, uh, grab these people who participated first and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously survived. <laughs> yes, that's what we do. <laughs> and uh, also to prevent the thing which uh, happened in uh, Germany for the uh, Settler Medal uh, was like they had the same people like winning all around, sort of, uh, not all around, but repeated. So we made a rule that like in. Uh, in the next round, the people who won first three prizes, they cannot, uh, they cannot um, uh, contribute. And uh, if uh, they won the very first prize anytime, they cannot contribute anymore. Because we don't want still the same people win. Uh, the fourth one we made uh, started with, actually even the third one, started with uh, also the new category. It says uh, program for beginner Wiki Wikipedians they can uh, choose their own article. Do we have? Okay, I'll show it up, sorry. So they have like uh, their own article which they can create and but they have smaller prices because uh, we, don't, uh, we don't want them to do necessarily the like good article or featured article or something like that. I would like to. No, 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 I just want to say if you have a commercial sponsor which is sponsoring your competition every time just thinking that is not a good idea to put some uh, articles which are associated with this sponsor. It happened in the first run of this competition that there was something like a Windows XP or so and it was a huge problem and we are still fighting with it that half of the community now don't like this competition because they are saying, ah, you are paid by the Microsoft. So, you know, every time just trying to k keep the the topic really clear without any connection of the sponsors. Hope so. It's short. Hello, my name is Hannah. I'm from Hebrew Wikipedia. Uh, I started to, work to write in Hebrew Wikipedia in May uh, 2009, and I was uh, writing article about archaeology, and no one is interesting. It, I was very quiet, only write about Mesopotamia, about Shumir, about uh, uh, Ashur, you know, Assyrian. And three months later, uh, there was a contest about, uh, from a short article to excellent, and I was invited to write it. 
to, write in the, to participate in this uh, contest, and uh, it was for me, it really uh, got me involved in the community. This is the first time people are addressed to me and said, can I help you? It was amazing because even people that are the same in the contest helped me. So for me, it was amazing. And after this contest, I was part of uh, the community. <coughs> And uh, I won uh, the second prize, but I didn't get it till today. The chapter promised, and uh, still two years later, I didn't get any prize. But it's, I don't care because it really was not about the prize. It was about the excellency, about uh, write a uh, wonderful article about the archaeologist Flinders Petrie, the father of the modern archaeology. And next year, a late year later, I was a judge, and I think that there also no one uh, got a prize. And people are well happy because, you know, to write in the, uh, in the Wikipedia, it really cost me money. I go to the university, I made research, I take photographs, and I don't care. Because it's nothing about, it's not about the money. It's only about being excellent. So I don't care about price. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Yes, we're keeping it short. Uh, I'm Axel from the Swedish Wikipedia, and uh, this winter we had a writing contest about astronomy where the first prize was to suggest the name for a newly found asteroid. And, and I think that's really cool. We were cooperating with the European uh, Amateur Astronomers Fraternity or something like that. I don't know the name in English, but... Uh, we had a lot of new participants because the, the guy setting up the contest did outreach to universities and, and um, other amateur astronomers. So it was a lot of new contributors coming in there. Uh, a lot of Wikipedians helped and uh, they did the first selection and then handed in the articles that were good enough to a jury that was consisting of professional physicists and astronomers. And uh, the winning article was actually so well written that it was selected to a featured article within a month after the competition. And uh, the, the first prize was to, to name the asteroid, and then there were telescopes for the 10 runners up. And uh, as, uh, to improve the, the helping out in improving articles, the chapter sponsored a prize for the one that didn't participate in the contest, but helped out in improving articles also. Sorry? No, I don't know. It still hasn't been named. It's a process of, of a long time before it actually has a new name. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm Dirk from the German Wikipedia, and I just want to say some words about the writing contest, which was mentioned already, which I would say is hugely popular. We're right now in round 13 or 14, and all the good writers of the German Wikipedia contribute. So it's hugely competitive, and it's hugely an honor to win. So I want, I've never won anything, but I really want to be better than him. <laughs> So, um, and the prizes are normally given by other community members, so they're not that big because somebody has to pay them, but they're often they're very original, and one of the most popular prizes is just go, go to um, a football game of my favorite club, and I go to in the club bar afterwards with you. Just, it's not much, but it's just special. It's a lot about appreci appreciation. And for the big prizes, um, I think, even if they are big compared to the work I have to put in this article. It's the lousy pay. And so, at least for Europeans, it's just, you have to have very big prizes or you won't pay me enough. Just, so just show me that you like me and that you think I'm good. Uh, in, on French Wikipedia, we have uh, a re writing article contest sin since uh, 2006. And Wikimedia France give a uh, small prize to every winner, but since one year we stop it because people don't like the prize, don't need the prize. They just made it for the pleasure. It's really great because this contest uh, is set two, tw twice, uh, twice a year, in March and in September, 
Everybody is waiting for this contest and everybody participate without any price, without any motivation, with any, there is no material motivation. It's really great for the community. And uh, during my residency in the Palace of Versailles, I've tried to set a contest, but there is the problem with a big institution like a GLAM. It's not really easy to give some price uh, for a writing article contest. So instead of having a conflict of interest, we prefer not to do this. And yeah, yeah, maybe giving the desk should be nice, but it's about 17 million euro. So it's, yeah. I think we need a second fundraiser every year. I agree. Um, I think that the the whole um, the the I think we have to differentiate between two types of of contests here, um, because we we have the contest like I think you mentioned it as well, the contest for the Wikipedians who want to write the very best article and they don't need any prize at all, and, and we have yeah like the Schreibwettbewerb and the, the Dutch Schreibwettstrijd and a, a lot of the European language communities at least have that kind of contest for existing Wikipedians. And there is the second category of contests, which is to get new people in. And there, the, the, the outreach is very important. There, it's very important that you have something to attract the attention. And that can be something like an iPad, but that can also be something like uh, an autographed photo of whoever. Um, so I think that's very interesting. And the second short remark I would like to make is, uh, in the Dutch Wikipedia, we have experimented with uh, teams competing to each other. And uh, I'm really interested in uh, hearing, like, is that a common thing or is that, like, weird? <laughs> Thanks for that. I mean, does anyone have an answer to this weird or common question? Yeah? Um, so, so there are s there's a list of articles, or th uh, basically two or three people, depending on how big the teams uh, are supposed to be, um, write together articles. They work out themselves how they write it. They work out themselves. So everything that they work out themselves, they just they make the teams themselves, and then they start writing. So you have, for example, um, two people from different fields who work together on a cross-field article or something like that. Uh, Mr. Versailles, would that be an option? Sorry, it's we are running out of time, so. Should be possible. Okay. That's a yes. Okay, that's a yes. Okay, so I'd like to really thank you all for joining the discussion and for your great feedback and input. It was very. Very interesting to hear all these great ideas, and I hope you, yeah, probably you can uh, add some of your ideas to the Etherpad. Um, the link is also listed on the Wikimania page of my talk, and um, I'd like to use half a minute of time to for some advertisement for a conference in uh, Germany in Nuremberg. It's the Wiki Convention, which takes place from the 9th to the 11th of September. Um, and it's addressing the, it's organized by community members and it's also addressing the Wikipedia and Wikimedia project communities and uh, there will be a lot of talks and great people and um, it's mostly German speaking so all German speaking people and communities are invited and if you'd like to know more about it just get in touch or check the Wikipedia site or um, yeah, would be great to see some of you there as well and um, yeah Thanks a lot and hope you have a great time here in Wikimania as well. <laughs>